to sing, and just one scripture I wanted to lift up real quick was Romans 15 and 4 says, For whatsoever things are written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And we thank God for what he's done in the past for all of our ancestors, and we thank God that we have hope that he's going to continue to move and to work in our lives. And so this simple little song just says, The Lord God Almighty then brought us out. The Lord God Almighty then brought us out. The Lord God Almighty then brought us out. Oh, yeah. The Lord God Almighty then brought us out. The Lord God Almighty then brought us out. The Lord God Almighty then brought us out. Oh. The Lord God Almighty done. Oh, yes. It was the Lord God Almighty done. The Lord God Almighty done. The Lord God Almighty done. Oh.
can't deliver, you can't heal, you can't set free. We know you can, we know you can. We lift our praise and thanks and expectation that you'll do it, Lord. That you'll do it, Lord. That you'll do it, Lord. Right now, right now, you have to change your same God.
of Jesus, my soul. Love, love Jesus, my, my soul. Love Jesus, bless His name, my, my soul, love Jesus. My soul, love the Savior, my little old soul, love Jesus, bless, bless His name. Eternal God, we thank and we praise you, the master for your love and your kindness, God. We thank you, God, for how you watched over us and blessed us and how you kept us all night long as we slept in slumber, God. And you loved us so much, God, that you taught us this morning with your finger of love, God. You stopped by our house, God. Somebody house you didn't stop by, God. Oh, God, but you stopped by our house and touched us this morning. And we all we owe all the glory and honor and the praise belongs to you. Father God, we thank you for another day's journey, God. God, this has been a trying time, but you promised us in your word that you would never leave us, neither would you forsake us. And you are a promise keeper, oh God. We thank and we praise you for what you have done and that, that you're going to do. Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus that I decrease as you increase, oh God, that you might get the glory, you might get the honor and the praise, God, out of the word, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray for the saints all over the land that are going through, oh God. We pray for your strength, God, that you would strengthen them as you promised us in your word, oh God. We thank you for your love and your kindness and your tender mercy. We pray for those that are in the nursing home. We remember, God, the saints of God's we pray, God, that your will will be done in their life, oh God. Those that are behind prison bars, those that are in the nursing home, those that are homeless, that are sleeping under the bridge, that have nowhere to go, God. Oh God, we know that you will make provision for them, God. And we thank you right now, God. We thank you for every saint here. We thank you, God, for the doors of this house. We thank you, God, for your man service and your woman service that you placed over this house, God. We thank you, oh God, for every saint here at this house. We ask, God, that you would bless them one by one, God, name by name. Every family that's represented here, God, we need you, oh God. We submit to you, oh God. We humbly submit ourselves to you, God. We pray that your will be done. We undergird, oh God. Thank you, Lord, the President of the United States, oh God, and his cabinets. And we pray for our leader over the Church of God in Christ and every man and woman that are standing in proxy for you, oh God. We undergird them, oh God. We undergird our schools, oh God. We pray that you be Lord and Savior over our school. We pray that you be Lord and Savior over this universe, oh God. We ask that you order our footstep, oh God. Lead us in the way that you would have us to go, God. And dear Master, we'll be so careful to give you the praise. The glory and honor is already thine. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you and amen. We thank God for this day. This is a good day. We thank and praise God for the opportunity to be in his house one more time and how he's blessed us and kept us and watched over us. And we're going to the book of Ephesians. And uh, we're going to start in the fifth chapter. And we're going to start at that 20th verse. And then we're going to work our way on down. Ephesians 5 and 20. It says, Give thanks always for all things unto the God and to the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submit yourself one to another. In the fear of God, wives, submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord.
For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. And then he tells the husband what their responsibility is. He said, husbands, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought man to love their wife as their own body. For no man ever yet hated his own body, but nourished it and cherished it, even as the Lord. For we are members of his bodies, of his flesh, and of his bone. And I'm going to talk about today a holy bride. A holy bride. Now when we those are those that got married. When we put, got ready to, some had weddings and some didn't have weddings. But in the process, you wanted to make sure you had the very best. And I'm going to take that from that, going to be our center point from what Christ said, th that 27 verse, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. Now, if you don't want no anything, God's saying he ain't going to want no anything. And so when every bride, I know when I did my 60s wedding anniversary, I didn't want to buy a dress. And have spots. I didn't want to have blemishes, a wrinkle. I wanted that dress to be perfect. I wanted to be clean, and I wanted it to be something that I would be proud to wear. And so, if we want these things, don't you think Christ wants that same thing? And He told us. He told the husband. He gave them specific instruction. He told us as wives that we are to submit to ourselves. Submit to our husband. That means we ought to reverence them and to respect them as they line up with the word of God. And so he's telling us that he's coming back after the Holy Church. So we got to start living here now in this present world, living a saved and a sanctified life, living our life with our spouse, living it the way God commanded. Some of them ain't saved and some of them is saved. So if we live a regular life, how will they be able to see the difference? And so God is telling us, he said, wives, if you just be obedient, all we got to do is just line up with the word. He told us to live a saved and a sanctified life. And that's why I said, I read that without spot, wrinkle, or any such blemish. Now, when we bought our dress, we wanted to make sure our dress lined up. We wanted to make sure that it looked good. And if it looked good to us, then we wanted to wear that dress. But if that dress didn't look good to us, we weren't wearing that dress. And so God is saying, I'm not going to accept just no anything. We got to live this thing. We got to walk it. We got to talk it. And we got to obey it. And so God is telling us as women of God, he told us when he pulled us out of the world, he told us, I bought you out of the world. So we as sanctified women, we don't look like the world. We don't act like the world. We don't talk like the world. And we don't treat our husband like the world treat their husband. We treat our husband the way God commanded us to treat them, with love and kindness. And so God is telling us we are to be holy women. I thought about something what uh, Minister Green had said and then Sister Alice had said on an occasion. He said that God told him, you're not going to be better to somebody else than you're going to be to your own wife. So we need to think about this wife 
Let us, whether our husbands are up to standards or they are not up to standards, we are the salt of the earth. We are to live this life before them. And this book said it'll work. If we submit ourselves, and that's not saying have him to have you doing stuff out of the will of God. But as long as it's lining up with the word of God, we keep praying, we keep believing, we keep trusting. And you better know God is working this thing out. Little by little, he'll live and they'll live. So we ought to be submitted to our husband. We ought to do it the way Christ say do it. And we ought to make sure that our husbands are well taken care of. I shouldn't compliment somebody else's husband. I don't say nothing to Brooke Collins. This is where we make the, these are things we need to think about when we do. We make sure we ain't going to fornicate. We ain't going to commit a dutch. We ain't going to do none of these things. But I'm talking about how many times do you compliment? Do you know that spout need compliment? He need encourage. I'm talking to the women. So I'm going to get to the men. But I'm just encouraging the women. Make sure you go above and beyond. Why? Because Christ went above and beyond for us so that we could be where we at today. He said, I'm looking for a holy bride. And so me and you as women of God, we got to respect. Number one, make sure your husband have food. It ain't sister girl food, uh, responsibility. That's your responsibility to make sure that when your husband come home, he done worked a hard day journey. If he hadn't worked a hard day journey and he come home, the food need to be cooked and prepared for him. Why? Because you took a vow that you would make sure that all of his me needs would met. It ain't just met in the bedroom. It's met outside the bedroom too. We have a responsibility to make sure that we we take care of our husband because Christ is taking care of us. We are his bride. And since we are his bride, and I'm going to show you how he take care of his bride. He's taking care of us. Then we need to make sure that our husband feel comfortable. When they are in need someone to talk to, don't let it be that somebody down the street that you don't say nothing to him. You go close up in one spot. He closed up in another spot. You don't communicate. You leave the door open for the enemy. We need to communicate with one another. Good morning. It's mighty strange. I say good morning to you, and I don't say good morning to him. I'm not talking about nobody else. I'm talking about me and my husband. I can do it like that. That I won't offend. I'm telling you what we got to get to that point. We got to love, and it's needful. You know, be surprised at why the divorce court is running the way it is. No communication. If we don't communicate, if I don't know, I live in the house with Brooke Collins. I don't know what the bills look like. I don't know what nothing is going on, but I'm his wife. But the lady down the street, she know more than I know. Something is wrong with that picture. That's why the Bible said that we got to be one. When we are one, there's nothing goes on that the other one don't know nothing about. And so we got to love our husband. We got to respect our husband. We got to prop our husband up. Even when they fall, it's our responsibility to come in and say, baby, let's get this thing right. Let's, let's straighten this thing out. If there's a conflict in the house, let me say this. Don't make the mistake. The Bible tells us, and I'm going to read it. When I get to it, he told us to be angry but sin not. Don't let a whole day or three or four hours go on and you're going to come back when you get ready to apologize. Guess what? God could knock on your door then before you decide you're going to come back and apologize. And the Bible said all your labor will be in vain. So when the Bible said we have a disagreement, somebody need to be intelligent enough to say, baby, we need to talk. This ain't right here. I'm talking about, see, we won't commit adultery. We're not going to fornicate. But these are things that are happening, and the devil knows it. And he said, well, they ain't going to pay that. And the Bible said, it's the little foxes that destroys the vine. Little things, me and you ain't going to think nothing. Then you wonder why the eyes go to wandering. See, I'm going to help us today. You wonder why the eyes go wandering. Sally Gale telling them all the time, Deacon Colin, you really look nice. That's a nice suit you got on. I see him every day, and I can't see the same thing that sister saw. He need encouraging just like everybody else need encouraging. Don't get comfortable with your spouse. Oh, he know I love him. No, he need to hear that. 
because Jesus made sure that we knew he loved us. Why? He left it on record so that we could do something about it. I ain't got a second guess whether Christ loved me. He told me he loved me. And he proved it day by day. He promised me that he would meet every one of my needs, not according to what I want, but according to his will. So if we can take care, he can take care of us. We ought to be able to take care of our spouse. Now, husbands, you got a responsibility. You can't be lazy and sending her out to work and you at the house beautifying your hair. Keeping yourself all cool and, and she out working trying to figure out how the bills are going to be paid. We have a responsibility. He told that husband here, he said, husband, you are the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Now you're not the savior of the body. Now let's get that understood. That's Christ's job. You are the provider, and you're the one to provide for her, but he's the Savior over all our bodies. He's the, and him only, he's just letting you, he's telling us, I'm styling you the way I want my bride, the way my, I not want my bride, the way my bride is. Not want, but it is. If we intend to go back with God, we're going to find out how God requires. But I want to get this worked out so that we can understand that Bopard has a responsibility. See, if you, what have happened here, we get married 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, we shut down and we don't communicate. I've seen in situations where people have died, wives don't have a clue what's going on because they've kept it up. Oh, you don't need to know it. Ain't nothing at my address. I ain't going to call it out that I don't know that I'm supposed to know. You're not going to keep no secret from me. I need to know everything simply because I don't know what I'm going to come up against. God left it on record for us, so we need to leave it on record for us so that husband and that wife will know. And if we be submissive to one another, do you not know it won't be hard to get the job done? I'm going to share something with you God gave me, and this is my witness. God told me when we got married, he said, I want you to write down on a piece of paper. And you tell that man everything that you like about him and everything that you don't, don't want done to you. And you have him to write down everything that he like, of, like for you to do for him and the things that he don't want you doing. That, 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 that. So you won't, the Bible said, give no place to the, the devil. So that devil couldn't come in because if he get to come in, me or him either gave a place to him. And so what we sit down there and I knew what he ate. I know what he don't like, and I know what he do like. Now, if I really love him the way I say that I love him, I'm not going to go prepare him something he's not going to eat. Why? Because it's going to cause confusion. And I'm in full knowledge that he do not like that. So this is what is happening here. If we keep the line of communication open with one another, you will be surprised at what you can accomplish. If my ultimate goal is to please that man. He got a list. He know what I like. And he know what I don't like. I thank and praise God. I'm just trying to help us today. When I first got married, I didn't understand. And God knows I'm grateful to this man today. He told me one day, God told him, I want you to start shopping for your wife. And this is to show y'all we didn't have nothing. But God was trying to prove to him that he is the provider. I'm the way, the truth, and the light. I'm going to show you what I can do with that little bit that you got in your hand because you are faithful in paying your tithes. And I'm, I'm going to take this little bit to show you how much more I'll do for you. The more you do for me, the more I'm going to do for you. Training him how to treat his wife and how to love his wife and how to honor his wife. And so my husband said he would go shopping. And when I would get home from work, and I was ahead, they scratched my head. There would be two or three dresses laid out that he had bought and put on the, on the bed and, and whatever else, that uh, cologne and stuff, just to show me. He said, baby, I can't give you everything, but this is the least to let you know that I appreciate what you, that mattered to me then. You see what I'm saying? He said, I want you to look like other women. And he said, I'm going to take my last to make sure that you look like other women. Well, you don't think I'm going to step up my game? 
I made up in my mind, well, if he can do that for me, I'm going to start doing some extra things for him. Why? Because I wanted this man to know that he meant everything to me. And I wanted to let him know not just in words only, but deed also. You are everything that I wanted that God gave. I asked for it, and God gave it to me. And this is what, how you keep your marriage going, by being there for one another and it encouraging. Didn't Christ tell us to build up one another? To love ye one another? And because if I don't take care of Brock Collins and that, and make sure his needs to be, then there's some spots in my life. That's called wrinkle. And it's blemish to God. Why? Because he said, you have that responsibility, not the next lady. That's your responsibility to make sure that his every need is taken care of. And this is what Christ is saying to us today. If we would just love our husbands and reverence our husband and respect our husband and build our husband up and vice versa, if they flip it into, I guarantee you what, we would see our community changing. Seeing the difference in there. I thought about when Sandy was saying about Aim Red when she came up, how she lived. That's how we grew and we saw the difference. Them old people made a sacrifice. It wasn't easy. It was a many days they probably wanted to throw the towel in, but they didn't. They hung in there through the good time as well as the bad time. And this is what Christ told us, we're going to have some rough days. But he told us if we mix it with some L-O-V-E, do you not know we can accomplish anything and we can overcome? And I thought about what I said, get back to Sister Alda, she had said one day. She said, when men's ought to compliment, you know, she don't mind people's. Am I saying it right, Sister Alley? You didn't mind people, different men compliment you saying it in a positive way. But make sure you tell it to your wife first. Not that she's saying you're looking at her, but did she need to hear that too? She need to be encouraged. And that's what I said, if we would encourage one another, how much better and further down the road that we would be. So this is what I want to talk about today. I got to that to get to this. I'm talking about a holy bride. Let's see what God said how his bride is. So we see he styled us after him, and this is how he treat his bride. So it's best me and you get on board and start treating our groom, and we are the bride like he treating his bride. Ephesians 5 and 27 says, and it's starting, his bride will be holy. In other words, God said, I'm not taking no junk. I'm going to get myself. That's what the scripture said that he might present it to himself, not to somebody else. When you get married and you go on your honeymoon, you don't take three or four people on the honeymoon with you. This is what God said. I'm going to present this to myself, a glorious church, not having a spot, a wrinkle, or any such thing, that, but that it should be holy and without blemish. This is what he said. My bride is going to be a holy bride bride she's gonna be a clean bride how do you know why she's gonna be a clean bride because i left it on record what i kind of bride that i want i left her instruction what she got to do to become my holy bride and then in the book of ephesians 1 22 and 23 this is what christ said his church is his bride and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. In other words, God said, I'm your source. Everything you need, you look to me. The scripture said, look unto me. And I'll make sure all of your needs are filled. Why? Because you made me the head and not the tail. Your source is in me. You're totally dependent upon me. And not only that, Christ proved that he loved us because he died for us. He gave his body to make sure over 2,000 years he died so that he could get his bride. And this is what he's saying. He's telling his bride, Whatever you need, you come to me. John 10 and 9 said, I'm the door. I'm everything that you need. 
By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastor. In other words, all of your needs will be met by you trusting and believing in me. I'm talking about the bride that Christ is looking for today. The bride, a holy bride. And so me and you got to understand, we already know what husband and wife, how to take care of each other. Now let's see how we can please our, our other uh, the Savior, how we can make him happy at the end of the day. He said, his bride, his bride, according to John 15 and 3. Now you are clean through the words which I have spoken unto you. God is not going to have a horse bride. Amen. Not God. Amen. Now men might accept one. But not God. That's why he told me to give you scripture. To tell them I'm seeking for a clean, a saved, and a sanctified bride. And I'm giving you all the instruction of what to look for and how to get to be that bride. I'm looking for a clean. Ain't no man ridding his mind. I'm talking about now let's go back to the natural man. Ain't no natural man going to want a nasty woman. If he want a clean one, don't you think Christ will want one? So God is telling us, you, and you can't clean up yourself. That's why he told me and you, we got to clean ourselves through this word. We, the word cleans us. The word delivers us. The word sets us free. The word of God. It takes care of us if we would just take, be obedience and do what God said. God said his bride is a different bride. Leviticus 10 and 10 say, I'm talking about the bride of Christ. Now, man, accept any kind of bride. But Jesus said, I'm not accepting no any kind of bride. 10 and 10 said, and that ye put a difference between holy and unholy and between unclean and clean. Why? Because I'm not going to accept anything. I want a holy bride. I want a bride that when I come to get her, that we can spend eternity, somebody that I can trust and know she won't turn her back on me down the road. So God is saying I'm coming after a clean bride. Ten and ten said that. He said we got to make a difference. Jesus told us, I pull you out of the world. Because the world said you can live slew foot and box needed if you want to. If you want to now. But God said you can't, not his bride. Now, like I said, a man want a holy bride. He want a clean bride. He want a sanctified bride. And this is what God is saying. And this is what God said to us when he bring us out of darkness. Thank you. When he bring us out of darkness. In 1 Corinthians the 6 and 17, I'm talking about God, holy bride. He said, wherefore come out. From among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Now, this ain't a suggestion here. This is what God said. His bride has got to be a clean bride. She got to be a saved and a sanctified. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Now, what he's saying is this. If you're going to do it the way you want to do it, I'm not going to receive you either. You're not going to get in. See, this is what people got to tell. You got to tell the people the truth. Either you're going to live for God or you're not going to live for God. Either you're going to be saved or you're not going to be saved. Because God is not taking no junk back to heaven with him. He's taking holy people back to heaven with him. And me and you better get on board today. And make sure that we are what we say we are. And this is what God is saying. In the word of God, God said his bride, now his bride is a peculiar bride. She's a different bride. She's a bride that will honor him. She's a bride that will respect him. According to 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. I'm talking about his bride now. I ain't talking about some other loose bride. I'm talking about his bride. And then I'm going to tell you about the loose bride. I'm going to show you that I'm not lying that he said he's not going to receive a loose bride either. It is said, 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. But ye are a chosen generation. In other words, you're a chosen bride. A priest, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praise of him who has called you out of darkness in 
to his marvelous light, which in time past was not a people, but are now the people of God, which has not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. He said, and before I took you on as my bride, you were hoish. Now that's what he's saying. You wasn't on the heels. He said you was loose. And I didn't want you. So I pulled you out so that I could prepare you to be a holy bride. And I thought about when Esther and them got ready to get married to the king. The Bible says that they took them women, those ladies that going before the king, for a year or so. They bathed them and perfumed. They cleaned them up. They rubbed them in all, kept their hair. Why? Because they were going before the king. Now, if a natural man got that mindset, and don't you, how much more the Lord do? He's not taking and accepting anything. He said, we are a peculiar bride. We are a holy bride. And God is saying that he's called us out. First Peter 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16 said, But as he which has called ye is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Let's stop that. Your lifestyle got to line up with the word of God. N nothing less. He ain't taking nothing less. We ain't going to stand before him and claim amnesia. Why? Because I left my word on record. You already know what is required of me. You know what I expect. And when I come, that's what I want. Or else you're going to be left behind. I'm not taking you back to heaven. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. Hebrews, when, when John, Jesus left in John, the 14th chapter, he said, I go away to prepare a place for you. And he said, if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come back and I'm going to receive ye unto myself. Self, that where I am there ye may be also who is he talking about his holy bride he's coming back one day and he's coming back after holy, a holy bride and God said I'm not going to accept and so God said I'm going to leave it on record that you can do this thing well we can't do it everybody can't live were well, you calling God a lie according to Acts 1 and 8 let's see what God said his bride can do his bride has the power to obey him. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon ye, and ye shall be witnesses unto both in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaritan and to the utmost part of the earth. In other words, we don't have no excuse. God said, you can live this thing here. Everything I put in here, that's why I read what I read today for the husband and the wife to do. He told us everything I told you, the husband and the natural, to do. You can do this thing. Husband, you can live this life. Wife, you can live this life. You make up in your mind you want to do it. You can do it. Why? Because God said, I left it on record. I gave you power. You can't live it in your own strength. But if we step up to the plate and obey God, we can live this thing. Honey, you can digest a lot of stuff that you think you can't digest. And like I had told you, you encourage, and I'm going to encourage you women. Don't you let nobody run your husband down. Nobody. I don't care if it's mama, brother, sister. Nobody. You build that man up. Vice versa, husband. Don't you let nobody run your wife down. You build them up. Why? Because Christ is building us up. And this is what God is saying to us today. In 1 John, glory to God. I'm talking about to his bride. 1 John 2 and 15. He told his bride. See, that's why we can't get tangled up with the world. Everybody get all upset. Well, you can't tell people that can't, they can't be in this. Jesus did. And he ain't had no problem telling his bride, uh-uh. You're not finna hit and miss over here. Not, not, G, not Jesus said, not my bride. He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in them. You see, you can't draw all that mess over. See, that's what's happening. We done drew it over into his house. That's it. This is the sanctuary, but we are the church. We done bought all the church. The church, he lives inside of us. There was a time he lived in the sanctuary. He dwelt among them, but he living in us now. But the church have bought this into God's sanctuary. And we done drug all this mess. And God said, no, no, bride. No, honey, you can't do this. You're not going to drag this in my house. 
this is this is my sanctuary, and I'm gonna show, show you to it in the book where they thought that they were gonna drag and put their gods up against God, God, and God was gonna accept, and God said, No, I'm not either. No, I'm not. And this is what God is saying. Now we go into this is what God told us He want a holy bride. Now, now we finna see what God said He not gonna accept. In the book of Ezekiel, the forty third chapter, the seventh verse. Ezekiel was sent to warn the children of Israel about their lifestyle. Now, Israel is God was his chosen people. That was his bride that he, and when we got engrafted into the, this, we became his bride. So in the book of Ephesians, I mean Ezekiel, forgive me, Ezekiel, the 43rd chapter, and we're going to start at that sixth verse. And I heard him speak unto me out of the house, and the man stood by me. And he said unto me, Son of man, the place of my throne and the place of the sole of my feet where I dwell in, the midst of the children of Israel forever. My holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile, Neither there nor their kings. In other words, ain't nobody getting by. By their holdness, nor by their carcass case of their kings in this high place. In their seating of their threshold, by my threshold, and their posts, by my posts, and their wall between me and them. They have even defiled my holy name by their abomination that they have committed. Wherefore, I have consumed them in my anger. In other words, his sanctuary, they had daily gods. God had his God. And he said, they got the nerve. He told Ezekiel, you go tell them they got the nerve to think, I'm going to accept this, to put them a little God they pagan God next to this my house. That's just like a man married to his wife and her, his wife got a boyfriend on the side. This is what God was saying. You got this mind, this my house. In other words, if you wanted some junk like that, you put it over there at your house. But this is my house, and this mess have crept up, and the men of God didn't say nothing because they could have stopped that. They could have stopped it at the but he said they let them did that. Let's see what God said. He said, now let them put away their holdem and their carcass of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in the midst of them forever. Ye son of man, show the house to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquity and let them measure the pattern. And he's telling them there, he said, if you take this mess away from me, then I'll dwell there. But if you don't take this away from you, I'm not dwelling there. In other words, I'm not accepting no anything. You can't bring me and present me no anything because God knows what he wants. And he will not accept it. And if he didn't accept it for him and his chosen peoples, what makes you think me and you going to make him accept something other than true holiness? That's all he's looking for. Always have and always will. And this is what he's telling them. He gave them opportunity. He told them if they repent, and put it away, he'll receive them. But he's telling them, if you don't repent and put it away, guess what? I'm not going to receive it. You're not going to be my bride. I don't care what they done told you. And since it is my heaven, as Pastor said, and it is my hell, I say who gets into heaven. And I say who gets it goes in. You go into hell on your own. I ain't sending you there. But if you want to get there, I'll make sure you get there. But I got a place prepared for you. Why wouldn't you want to go to this holy place that I took the time out and I prepared myself so that you would have an opportunity to get to that place? And then he told them over in the book of Joshua, let's go to that. And I'm going to wrap, just to wrap this up, i wrap this up. We're talking about a holy church now that, that God is coming after. See, people can live loose if they want to, but God is not accepting anything. 
Joshua, the 24th chapter, God told them, and he's telling us, the word of the Lord said, Joshua 24, 9, 19, and 24. God already told us that he's a jealous God, and he's not going to accept anything. Now, if I tell you that I'm jealous, why would you flaunt that in my face? You already in full knowledge that I don't like that. And this is what he said in Joshua 24, and Joshua said unto the people, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God, and he is a jealous God, and he will not forgive your transgression nor your sin when you're in full knowledge and you continue. That's what he means. If you continue to do it, I'm not going to forgive you. Guess who knows your heart better than you do? It's Christ. And he said, for if ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, that's what I just read what they was doing in Ezekiel, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after he has done you good. So he's telling you, you're not going to two-door him. You, he'll live and they'll live. God said, not me you won't. Not, not me. Why? Because I am a holy God. And so God is telling us, that we are going to have to live a saved and a sanctified life. Now, let me get to us to make sure we understand. Now, this is what he told Israel. Now, this is what he's telling us today, too, that he's not going to accept. We're in a day and an hour that the enemy try to make sure, you know, he'll try to come in and smooth things over. And like I said, he said, the little foxes are what destroys the vine. In the book of... Ephesians, the fifth chapter, I want to read just starting at the first, fifth chapter, the first verse to the seventh. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, that's what he's telling his brides, and walk in love as Christ also have loved us and has given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. But fornication and all uncleanliness are covenant. Let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. In other words, he said, my bride don't live like this. Not my bride. He told us, neither filthiness or, nor foolish talking nor gestures which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know that no homemonger. So that's why he's saying, I'm telling you, you got to come out the world and you got to submit totally to me. We can't go backwards. We got to go forward. And he said, nor uncleaning person, nor covenant man who is an idolater or an inherit." has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. In other words, it ain't what you do, it's how you do it. Jesus said you're not going to get in. If you intend to be his bride, you got to let him come in. And he has the spirit of God. He gave you the power over acts, and he told you that he can pull this stuff out of you if you surrender. And this is what he's saying to us. He said, let no man deceive you with vain words because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. So he's saying his bride can't have his hand there. He said, be not ye therefore partakers with them. In other words, we see things and people are practicing stuff like that. We can't partake with them. We can't get on board with them. We got to tell them the truth. No, I'm separating myself. Why? Because I want to be his bride when he come back. I want to be a holy bride. And guess what? People are watching our life every day, all day. Like I said, some people won't come to God like Sister Alice was saying today. Everybody ain't come to church, but they watching us. And if we live a crooked and a regular life, look at the damage that we're doing to our brothers and sisters. And so God is saying to us that when he come back, he's coming back after a holy bride. And this is why he told us over in the book of 2 Corinthians, the 13 and 5, he told us, see, I ain't to judge you. And you ain't to judge me. I don't know if you're the bride or not. You don't know if I'm the bride. We say we the bride. But this is what Jesus said. You examine yourself. Whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own self. 
Know ye not your own self that Jesus Christ is in you except ye be reprobated? In other words, don't you know you ought to be my bride? Don't you know whether you're supposed to be saved? I gave you everything. I gave you all the instruction. I think about the song we sang. He laid the foundation. He opened up the way. What more can God do? He gave us 66 books for us to get from earth to glory. And this is what he said. If we just line up with the book. And this is where the enemy trips us up here then. We're going to go to Ephesians 4 and 17. These are not suggestions. These are commandments for his bride. He's telling us what we can do and what we can't do. And so we got to make sure that we meet all the requirements to be his holy bride. This is what he said here. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord. That ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in vanity of their mind. In other words, where you used to live. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past filled has given themselves over unto lasciviousness and to work in all uncleanness with greediness. Now, he told us, don't you be like that. Why? Because I bought you out of the world. Don't you go back and fooling around and, and, and partaking in that. He said, but ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been, t been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye pull off. And that's where I want to stop it. Why would God tell his bride you got to pull off some? If you don't cross all your T's and dot all your I's, I'm going to heaven anyway. Jesus is telling us we're going to have to pull off some stuff here and keep it off. When we pull it off, we can't go back and put it back on. And he's letting us know it's a possible chance you can go back and put that mess back on if you don't stay rooted and grounded in the word of God. I told Sister Alice today, I was thinking about this here to this morning. I said, don't tell me what you can't do if you really make up in your mind that you want to do and you want to live this life. I thought about it the other day, and I think it was, I want to make sure I'm adding this up in my, yeah, 40, 25 years ago that I stopped smoking. Don't tell me what you can't do if you really make up in your mind. Now, one thing I do know, if I play around with it, it's a good possible chance I could go back. And the Bible said it'll be like a dog that returned to his own body. And so God said, I, I ain't no uncleanliness is coming up into heaven. And so I got to keep this. I got to keep my body under suggestion. I can't afford to be caught out doing just in and anything. I got to live this life before Christ Jesus. And it said that you haven't heard put that ye pull off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye pull off, put on the new man, and which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, put in a weight line, we can't be saved and sanctified. We can't go to heaven. God bribes and he ain't going to have no line bribe. This is what God is saying. Make sure, saints, we make sure we think before we speak and what we're going to say simply because God said he's not going to have a horse bride. He's not going to have a line bride. He's going to have a clean and a sanctified bride. He said, wherefore, put away lying, speaking to every man truth with his brother. We are to tell the truth and to honor and respect our brothers. For we are members of one of another. Be ye anger and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. That's why I say we can't get angry husbands. We can't get angry wives. And single, uh, single people either. You cannot afford to get angry and wait you two or three hours before you correct that thing. Simply because we don't know when Jesus is coming. And while we in our little flesh swole, Jesus could. And once he knock on that door, it's over. So that's why he told us, you can but repent. And I'm learning and growing every day. I ain't there, but I'm working on it. If it's a problem arise, you ask Brother Crowder, I'm trying to get to the point. I'm trying to beat the devil to the point. Baby, I'm sorry. 
I could be ever right or he could be ever right, but I'm sorry. To keep that line of communication open so that the enemy can't come in. And this is what God said in 2 Corinthians, the reason why I say it, 2 Corinthians 2 and 1. Lest Satan should get an advantage over us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. If me and you don't correct that, we give him an advantage to take us down the wrong road and we think and we heaven bound with the hammer down and we still in sin. And God said, I'm not going to accept it. So I'm telling you, Collins, get that right. Get it right and keep it right. And so as I'm learning, I'm wanting to work on this thing working on me. Neither give him a place, neither give place to the devil. So the devil can't get no place unless I give him a place. And that's why he's telling us, Put a stop to that right quickly. Repent. And then in, in, in Revelation 2 and 5, I thank God, say, repent quickly as I remove my candlestick. And so in other words, he's telling us, get that thing right immediately so that that devil can't let that thing root up and grow up in us. And he said, let him who stole, he's telling his bride, you can't steal no more. And he said, but rather let him labor and work with his hand the things which is good that he may have to give to him that are in need. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. We don't slander, we don't gossip, but that which is good to use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Because if you get out the wheel, the Holy Ghost gonna nourish you. Get it right, get it right. Get it right. Get it right. Now, what you do with it, when you don't get it right, then me and you grieve the Holy Spirit. And if he come back while we grieve in the Holy Spirit, we going straight to hell. That's where we going. You ain't going up. You going somewhere, but you're going down instead of going up. And it said, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamors and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. In other words, he's telling the saints. Don't let that foolishness root up in us. Now, we might not be guilty of all that other stuff that are. But you know when we get angry sometimes, we don't just straighten that out right then. Malice will rise up. We hold on to it and won't say nothing to it. And, and bitterness, he said, because that stuff will do what? Root up in us. We don't kid it out of us. Ain't none of us are exempt from it. If the enemy came at Jesus, me and you ain't got a chance without Christ. And this is what he's saying. If you don't take care of that, I gave you the power to take care. You put that dog in his place. And this is what God said. I, then I will receive you. And he said this. This is what he told us as saying. And be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. In other words, what Christ is saying. What you did to me, I forgave you. I took your sins up on me. I didn't do no wrong. I took your sin and I placed them on my shoulder. And I told the Father to prepare me a body. And he came and he died so that me and you could be his bride. He's looking for a holy bride. Saints, let's examine ourselves. Let's see these things that have been brought out today. When the enemy come and he is coming, he will come and try to attack us with these things. Let's, let's clean this up right quick. Let's get it right right quick. Husband, let's get it right. Treat your wife right. Wives, treat your husband right. Single women, treat your husband. Treat your friends or whoever you come in contact with on a daily basis. Let's just treat people right. That's why that last verse he told us to have love eat for one another and treat one another right. Why? Because Christ is loving us and he's concerned about us and he's taking care of us and he's good to us. So let us be good to the next person. And as we close, we thank God for this day. This has been a good day. We want to go back and we want to put what we learned today in practice. Let us start honoring one another and respecting one another and watch what God do for us.